If you want to win, you will do anything to get an edge. In esports, that usually means hardware. Players will find the best keyboards, mice, and mouse pads to gain an advantage. I have no idea he's here this early. He's got one, he's got three! Oh my god! No! What? Not again! Not again! But when it comes to monitors, most players tend to do the same thing. They sit with their nose so close to the screen that they can basically smell dust too. Is this monitor? The, the, the man is in the screen. But one Valorant player is bucking the trend and playing in a way that no one has ever seen before. Huh? Wait, his monitor's like that? He's reading it like a book. He a chance. But... <laughs> Kang Kang is the face of Chinese Valorant. He's one of the most exciting players in the scene. And even though he plays Valorant like he's watching YouTube videos on his tablet, he's become one of the biggest names in the game. Kang Kang still holding the ground. Lockdown goes down. Ah! Get out of it! Get out of it! This guy is like a heat seeking missile! He does not miss! Bats in the middle of CT, he's trying to find something further. Chi Chu's got him dead. And Kang Kang, how is he? Ah! And this is the man you'd want in that scenario, but both players up above, a flash ready. Oh, oh, it. What? Truly unbelievable! So does playing with his monitor at the world's weirdest angle help Kang Kang click heads? Why does he do this? And in doing it, is he risking his health? He's an iPad kid, dude. No wonder he's so cracked. All right, so before we get into it, just want to remind you all to please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. That way you won't miss our next Valorant video. So who is Kang Kang, and why is his monitor set up so weird? Well, to answer the first question, Kang Kang was an FPS kid growing up in China, and jumped to Valorant when the game was in beta. His older brother tried to go pro back in 1.6, so to pay homage, Kang Kang combined his in-game name with his brother's to make ZMJJKK. But everyone calls him Kang Kang. Anyway, he grinded Valorant until Royal Never Give Up picked him up back in 2021 before switching to CBT Gaming once Riot's sanctioned leagues showed up. They dominated the Hong Kong-Taiwan region, but once qualifiers for Valorant's first international LAN in Reykjavik rolled around, Kang Kang fell short. <laughs> So he redoubled his efforts, this time heading over to EDG and getting into Valorant Champions 2022 through the last chance qualifier. Kang Kang was dying to share his gameplay and personality with the rest of the world, but at Champions, he didn't exactly have a chance to show what he was capable of. Sadly, we've had to say goodbye to EDG. We've had to say goodbye oh, to the two new I teams hate these days, here at Champions, Jess. Uh, but it, oh. it bodes really well for their future. That's the bright side. EDG didn't win a single series of Champions, exiting the event early. And when they attended the lock-in at the start of 2023, they saw the same result, which meant that going into Masters Tokyo, very few people had any expectations for Kang Kang. This is still the core of insane players who've played together for quite a while and actually have solid coordination when they want to and can upset teams as they have proved before in previous events. But I still think a lot of their ideas are just inherently troll. They have gone back and fixed that. Still, I think I can't really warrant putting them above anyone else. I would consider it an upset if they beat any of the other teams except attacking Soul Esports. And yet, that was the tournament where he finally got to pop off. There's the first, Sire player goes down, he falls away with almost no threat, and the three players on his team already start flooding through towards a long, another, the readjust gorgeous just 50 HP, and he still wants more. Cage in place, and he gets a second of respite here as they close the gap. Another for Kang Kang, this guy is playing it perfectly. One by one they face him, and one by one they fell. There's no way you get away with that. Snakebite at his feet, trying to get the res off. There it is, adjustments necessary. Kang Kang. Six to claim the kill. There's a rifle. Here's the flash. Why not? Take a fight. Sagetsu says, I dare you. Second guess is in with the off. This man is playing gun game. Kang Kang's got a to work here. And once again, rinse and repeat. Run it on back. He's going to find Sire Player. He avoids all the utility, but he can't avoid Bat. Yes, he can. Dips away. And he's still standing. He's still doing damage. Bat's in the middle of CT. He's trying to find something further. Chi has got him dead. And Kang Kang, how is he? Oh, how is he doing? 
Kang Kang's performance in Tokyo was a masterclass both in aggressive opping and showmanship. But all the attention meant that the Valorant world finally saw the absolute weirdest thing about him. His monitor. Bodies to throw at it. What the f Wait, his monitor's like that? Hold on, that angle was crazy. What was that? Hey, what the f is going on here? Bro's playing on a tablet. What is that? What? Yo! Yo, what is his mo Yo, did you guys see his monitor? He's an iPad kid, dude. No wonder he's so cracked. My guy is playing Valorant as if he's on a drawing tablet. And if you know anything about FPS, you know that that's not exactly normal. Like, if you've ever watched Hack FPS, you know that most players have their noses deep into the monitor. Your monitor's getting closer every day, okay? <laughs> so you're kind of putting on the blinders anyways, right? Do you have full screen vision? Yeah, I do. I have peripheral vision that I can see. But it, yeah. if I want to check specifically something, I, like, I understand that if my HP is red, <laughs> then I'm low. <laughs> The reason that players are trying to get so close to their monitor isn't so they can see the source code, it's so they can see better. You may not like it, but this is what peak gamer performance looks like. CS players have for years competed in a sort of arms race over how close they can get to their monitors, which has inspired a lot of people to ask, why? But for some, the future lifetime of back pain and bad eyesight is worth it to squeeze just a little bit more performance out of their bodies. Simply put, many pros feel that sitting so close to your monitor lets them see the screen better and react to targets popping into their field of view faster. Especially if you play 16 by nine where the targets can be a lot smaller. And yet, Kang Kang has a different approach. Is that uncomfortable for his like neck to like be like, I don't know. Bro's getting kills like this? I'm so behind on the meta. Now, to be clear, this is not like magically better than just putting your eyes millimeters from the screen. That's a nasty posture. I don't think he's going to be able to last too, too long with a modder in that position. It's just very low, a lot of neck flexion. Anytime there's anything intense happening on the screen, he's going to be leaning forward. We're gonna put more strain on the neck. I wouldn't recommend anybody to have that monitor position. And beyond the back pain, having to constantly strain at the edge of your vision is not gonna be good for your eyes long-term either. And his eyes, like that's gotta cause some nasty eye strain, I would imagine too. Yeah, that long-term, that'll be nasty. And yet, Kang Kang persists. Now, we're not entirely sure where this bizarre habit comes from. There's footage of him playing in his early days where he sits like any other FPS pro. So he had to have picked it up recently, which probably means that he adopted the posture because he felt like it was helping him win more, which given his recent results is hard to argue. EDG went on an impressive run in Tokyo. They took down one of the tournament favorites, Loud, on their way to a top six finish. And when Kang King rolled up to LA for champions, he did not disappoint. That's through, you won't. And look at the damage on the back of it. What? No, that was actually the most ridiculous off shot I've ever seen in this game. They have to get the spike down at the end of the day here. Another tap, forcing it again, just trying to get these open sight lines and open fights down. Nobody wasn't expecting a third player. Kang Kang in the cage. He reacts in time. Cloud spotted. Does he really go no. for this? Yes, he does. Creeping onto the angles, dangerous. When you're up against the operator, uh, doesn't nail it, but still with the movement. Kang Kang. Instantaneous. I've never seen a player like Kang Kang. The orbital strike expended by Howdong, enough to slow them all the way down. Giants, what's the call here? They don't have showers control. You're going right into the maw because Kang Kang is still watching. And do you dare encroach on his territory? I asked the question how Kang Kang was going to be able to find value in some of these rounds where Giants no just hit way. the opposite side. There's no way. In the smoke with the nose scope. Decent information here, the Paper X. Oh, where the players are and standing, Kang Kang. Wants to really make a go of it. And it's more than that at this point. Two kills. Blaze Storm refreshed. Teammates feeling just empowered entirely. <laughs> they have shut this one down. Kang Kang took EDG to the playoffs, where they fell short to Loud in an absolute nail-biter. The team finished in fifth, cementing Kang Kang as one of Valorant's most exciting young superstars. And being back on the international stage helped more people get to know the man behind the plays. In our opinion, they are just trash. 
to be honest, we don't really care what strategies they're gonna pull off. We, uh, in our eyes, they're both like, uh, basically just trash. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. To be honest, when I play on a stage, I feel like I'm not the only one who is fighting on the stage. Uh, there's another person, which is my brother. Like, uh, his energy is inside my body, so it feels like I have a combination of me and my brother together uh, fighting. Also, it ki uh, kind of motivated me to push me forward and to become a better player. And of course, more people continue to take notice of his strange monitor tilt. And then me more focus on the, uh, on the cross here. Yeah, I understand for, like, just for tournaments it's good. I mean, yeah. if you are playing a lot on this one, it's crazy. In practice, I didn't use it. I almost do this. Okay. But uh, when they are on stage, I think this can help me. Yeah, I got it. It's bad for my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's like he's on the analyst desk. Yes! He looks down on his enemies for real. Like, no joke. He literally looks down on his enemies. But why do we think that this is so weird? Like, I sit so close to my screen that when I get flashed, my face turns white. How is Kang Kang's setup all that different? He does what he does to win, just like the rest of us. Some people might call it cursed, but I mean, look at yourself. Tell me that the way you are sitting right now watching this YouTube video isn't cursed as f and there's no way that your gamer posture isn't even worse. For years, FPS players have destroyed their bodies in search of fractional advantages over their opponents. Now, one dude comes around with a different approach and somehow it's weird? Ultimately, Kang Kang is just looking for an edge. And he may have found it. Don't judge him for innovating. But, uh, maybe don't try this one at home, kids. I have, like actually pretty good posture when I game. I have horrible posture when I do anything else <laughs> in my computer chair. That dude from the South Park World of Warcraft episode for the guy like leaning in his chair with like the carpal tunnel wrist thing. That's me when I do anything for work.